Okay, what I'm going to show you here today is a series of maps uh, that are themed around conservation and, and environmental management uh, on the Manga Map platform. Now, these maps are going to show different ways to visualize data. Uh, I'm also going to walk you through how to modify those map, map contents, change styles, and how to share those maps with other people. So, in this particular account, there's a collection of four maps. And you can see the map titles at the top there. If we open one of these, we can see the map contents. Now, this map has a number of layers showing the distribution of land mammals in Namibia, uh, including gemsbok, lions, and elephants. Uh, and it also showcases a sidebar where you can add content, photos, and links to other resources. These layers can be turned on and off individually by the user so they can explore the map contents. This final layer here gives the overall terrestrial diversity. Now the second map in this collection is a map of the Great Barrier Reef on the east coast of Australia. And this map shows the incidence of coral bleaching. Shown as white points. This map also shows the clustering feature. So the number there indicates the number of data points that we have in the area. If we click on one of those, zooms in, and expands those points. And we can keep going in further and further. So you can see the individual reefs here in the satellite image. And we can click on one of these data points to see the detailed information about it. There are other layers that we can turn on and off here, such as park zoning. It's going to give us the different management zones that exist within the park. The next map I'm going to show you is uh, sulfur dioxide emissions in the United States. And this map showcases our heat map tool, which indicates the density of points in a given area. It's a dynamic tool, so as you zoom in, the visualization changes to give a more local display of the data. If we click on an individual point, we can see a pop-up of information about that point. Now, as the map administrator, I can decide what information the end user sees. So I can remove any of this information from the display if I wish. I can format it to make it appealing to look at. The final map here is the shoreline sensitivity in Houston, Texas. And this is all real data. So on this map, we've got various different layers. We've got different types of shorelines uh, and their classes. So 1, 2B, 2A, and different colors. If we click on one of those, we can see the information about it. Now, as the administrator of this map, I have some additional controls here to change the style of the map. So you can see here, we've got um, points which show uh, beach access points, okay? And if I want to change the style of those points, I can do that by going to Layers, editing the layer. And for example, I want to change the size to 11. I can do that and save. And there we have the new point style. I can also switch the base map as the end user of the map. So if I want to change it from this streets base map to a satellite base map, I can do that. And I can also print from this map if I want to save it as a PDF and share it with somebody else. Now, if I want to add new content to this map, I can do that by going to Layers, Add Layer. Uh, first of all, I can see all the layers that are in my account already that have been uploaded. Or I can choose to upload a new data set. And we support all of the common file types, such as shapefile, KML, GeoJSON, spreadsheets, and so on. The data can be in any coordinate system. We'll detect the coordinate system and import it into the map. OK, thanks for your attention. That was just a quick introduction to maps for environmental management and conservation. If you'd like to try this out for yourself, you're most welcome to sign up for a free 30-day trial of Mango Map, the platform that I've just demonstrated to you. 
Um, we also have the maps that I just showed you as live uh, examples available on our examples page.